everyone welcome to my channel my name is Courtney it is time for another round of the mystery box challenge if you're new to this challenge this is how it works a group of youtubers get together we are assigned another youtuber and we send them a random box of goodies now each box is themed this month it is Dollar Tree there are also always two wrapped challenge items in the box these are items that are a little tricky to DIY with and that we have to use now there's also a twist and this month's twist is we actually have to use pieces of our box in a DIY along with one of the challenge items. So that is the twist that we have to tackle. Now, who did I send my box to? I sent it over to Jay at J Money DIY. Y'all, I'm gonna be brutally honest here. I was hard on her. So you guys have to let me know if you feel like my challenge items were maybe mm, too mean, but you know what? I know she can handle it. That should be, honestly, she should be flattered. I think that I have that much faith in her that I know she can do it. So check out Jay's video. And then I got my box from Jennifer from Little Bit of Common Crazy. Now there is a playlist link down below. So if you just click on that, it will take you in order so that the whole thing makes sense. Now let's dive into the box. Jennifer may or may not have told me that she was hard on me, so let's see uh, if she was. I have the box opened right here in front of me. I am gonna put my glasses on because, well, I can't see, so <laughs> I gotta make sure that I am in focus in the camera. Okay, here we go, let's see. I don't know, y'all, she made me nervous. If she, Jennifer says she thinks she was hard, then she probably was. All right, here's her little note, Courtney. Thank you for always including me in the mystery box challenges. I always look forward to them. I'm so grateful for you two because of meeting you and the friendship we have developed. You are truly a gift in my life. I can't wait to see what you create. Love, Jennifer, P.S. I know you like a good challenge. Okay, okay, okay. And then this says, Courtney saw this and thought of you. It's gotta think it's oh oh that's so sweet oh. sorry i'm gonna come right back myself together so what it says is it is well with my soul and then on the back it has joy to the world um this this was kind of um it was a song that was sung at my mom's beautiful funeral jennifer came down for that surprised me and showed up to it and um this just really means a lot i'm gonna put it on my little mom shelf i've got going here in my office thank you jennifer i love you thank you it's very sweet okay Okay, back into the box. Let's see now. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna, I can do this. All right, we are starting off with one of these little jugs that say pumpkin punch. A pumpkin pick, can't go wrong with pumpkin pick. Let's see. Oh, these are, okay, hold on. There's items that are actually wrapped. So cute. Okay, these are really cute. My Dollar Tree like has no fall stuff out. So it's a kind of neutral colored pumpkin. Ah, some leaf cookie cutters. She knows I like to do stuff with clay, so that's fun. Let's see. Oh, cute, okay. It's another little pumpkin, I guess it's a little set. These are actually really cute by themselves, if I'm being honest here. So cute. All right, nothing in that. Ooh, this is pretty. Oh my gosh, wow. It's a very large uh, tin pumpkin. Ooh, that's really cute. Uh, let's see what else we got. Some wooden home signs. A little hello fall with some pumpkin a bigger pumpkin oh that's cute a little beaded wreath with a leaf some laser cut leaves and some metal tacks oh oh <laughs> metal tacks okay metal tacks all right <laughs> 
We are down to the two challenge items. Y'all, I feel a little scared. The fact that she went out of her way to tell me that these may be hard. They're okay. Let's rip the band-aid off. Here we go. This is honestly my favorite part, favorite part is finding out these items because I don't know. I like it and also don't like it at the same time. Oh wow, okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. It's not okay. It's not scary. Like it's not this really isn't that bad. It's a cute little fairy garden. Oh my god, like how am I? Hmm. <laughs> okay. 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 I my brain is like Thanks, long guy. I don't know if y'all can hear that. I'm like, why, long guy? It's Monday. You're not supposed to be here. Okay, last item. Oh, it's a little squishy. Please don't be a stuffed animal. I've butchered some things. I've butchered a Barbie head on here. I've... Oh. It's like... Oh, no. Is this a cat toy, Jennifer? Did you send me a cat toy? Girl. Y'all... Please tell me this is not a cat toy. I, oh no, Jennifer, Jennifer, not a cat toy. Oh, okay. It's an ankle skipper. I feel like I've had one of these before, have I? Hmm. And, oh, it, and it lights up. Okay. Um, all right. I am going to take a couple of days to think about this. I'll come back really quickly. Your time. Um, I will say this. Whitney has it out for me and I have purposely been avoiding having her send me a box because I've been really scared about what she'd send me because I was kind of tricky on her but y'all this is really hard so all I can think of is like a police craft what do y'all think it's blinking red and blue police craft maybe all right let's do this Let's get this DIY party started. To begin this first project, I will be using the pack of metal tags that Jennifer sent me. I also grabbed a wooden crate. This came from Dollar Tree that I had in my stash, and I pulled out my fall themed scrapbook paper, sorted through that, and found this pumpkin page that I liked. It came from Hobby Lobby. It's one of their pages that they have every single year in their uh, scrapbook aisle. I took the crate and measured the long sides of the crate, cut it out on the scrapbook paper and attached it with a glue stick. With this second piece of scrapbook paper that complements the first one, I grabbed my metal tags, traced them out on the scrapbook paper, cut them out, and you guessed it, I applied that scrapbook paper again with the glue stick. Now that the scrapbook paper has been applied to both sides of the tag, you want to grab some kind of pointy object and poke where the holes were in the tag because you definitely need those holes showing through. I grabbed my glue gun and applied the tags to the ends of my wooden crate. From there, I grabbed a bamboo skewer and I trimmed it down with my miter shears so that it would fit on the top to make a handle. Now to make sure that the bamboo skewer was secured into this little uh, bucket pail container thing in my bobber that I'm making, I grabbed two of these wooden pumpkin stickers. They were from Dollar Tree and I'm just using my paint markers. The stem was brown, the leaves were green, the pumpkin was orange. And then I applied some hot glue to the back of the wooden pumpkin sticker, making sure that I got enough on there. So when I stuck it to the sides of this little container on the tag, that it was going to grab on and kind of adhere around where that bamboo skewer was poking out of the tag. Now to finish off our little fall bucket list, I did create this free printable for 
for you that you can print out. It will be linked down below in the description box along with everything else you're seeing in today's video. I opted to print mine on some sticker paper and then I stuck those to three inch wood rounds, but you don't have to do that. If you wanted to print them on some cardstock, you could do that and just kind of throw them in there. If you did want to make them a little more kind of substantial tokens, you could use foam board, you could use cardboard. I mean, lots of options here, but here is a cute little fall bucket list activity pail that you can grab some things out of to do some fun activities during the fall. I grabbed the pumpkin sign for this DIY. Started by removing the raffia bow, setting it aside because I will use it again, and then grabbed my heat gun to get these two pumpkins separated. I battled it out for a little bit, but I was able to get them separated. The rough spot where that smaller pumpkin was, I did go ahead and take a sanding block and just sand that larger pumpkin for just a little bit. And then I took some scrapbook paper off camera that I got again from Hobby Lobby. I traced around the pumpkins and cut out those pieces of scrapbook paper. Again, with that larger pumpkin, I did grab my rotary tool to see how a hole would drill into this and it went fine. So I grabbed the other little smaller pumpkin and with the Sharpie marker, I marked where I wanted to drill all of my holes on that larger pumpkin. I did, full disclosure here, use the rotary tool for about the first two. It works fine, it just takes a little while. And so after I did about two, I was running out of time. So I grabbed my drill and it went a lot faster, but you definitely can get it done with the rotary tool. I grabbed my glue stick and attached both of the pieces of scrapbook paper to each of the pumpkins. And on the larger pumpkin, I grabbed my tool and I poked the holes through the backside and then flipped it over and kind of poked it through the front. That raffia bow set aside, it went back onto that small little pumpkin with just some hot glue. And then the small pumpkin did get hot glued back to the larger pumpkin where it kind of originally was in the first place. Then the last step was just to take some fairy lights and I fed those through the holes through on the back side of the larger pumpkin sign and just use scotch tape to secure that in place. And that's it. I kept it very simple, but I just love the little extra pop of light, especially at nighttime. I think it's a really cute decor piece. this DIY is an easy one. We're going to be using this metal uh, pumpkin sign. And the first step you want to do is just remove the pumpkin from the base. From there, I had some of this yarn be yarn that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I started on the left side of the pumpkin at the very top, taking some hot glue. I just took that yarn from the top middle of the pumpkin and went around to the bottom part of the uh, middle of the pumpkin. Now I did leave a little tail as I cut these pieces so that I could kind of secure it on the back side of the pumpkin just to make sure that my little yarn pieces did cover the whole thing. And then I went with the second row and then a third row. Once that left side had three pieces of the yarn attached, I went to the right side and did the same thing. And the last step was just that middle section that was open. I just took the yarn and just kind of went spinny, spinny, loopy, loopy all the way into the middle, securing with hot glue as I went. The last thing is I wanted the stem to be covered with something. So I used some of that wire twine that you can get from Dollar Tree and I wrapped it using some hot glue to secure it as I was wrapping it. And the last step, I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to leave it plain, but I had one of these bows and I thought, eh, you know what, let's just throw a bow on there. So I hot glued the bow to it and that's it. I just left it very simple. It kind of gives off like uh, Elmo pumpkin vibes, but I'm kind of digging it.
This DIY, I'll be using this pumpkin punch jug now. I, originally, I had an idea for it, and that's why I've got my heat gun. And then I was like, nope, not going to do that. Let's flip it over. So I flipped it over and decided to do a quick little um, DIY here by painting the backside and the sides of this jug with some black paint. I left the top part kind of where the cork is, that brown color. And then I grabbed some of these styrofoam glitter balls, glitter blah. Blah, 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 is what I say about glitter. They're not terrible, but man, they still get glitter everywhere. I had them left over from last year. They were from Dollar Tree, and I pulled out orange ones to glue to the kind of top of this, the different sizes, just to kind of make it look like little orange sparkly bubbles were coming out of this little punch jug. Once these little nightmare glitter balls were glued to the top, I did take uh, three of them and glue them to the bottom right corner of this little punch jug. And then I had these little bat skewers and pumpkin skewers from last year, uh, Dollar Tree, and I took some antique gold rub and buff and painted them with the gold uh, rub and buff and ended up trimming off the little skewer parts and then I just hot glued three of these little bats to the jug area and that's it I just kind of kept it simple nothing too crazy but you know a little bit of shimmer from the glitter and a little bit of shimmer from the gold bats This is the world's easiest DIY and literally would take you less than a minute to make if you don't count paint drying time. So I'm using the cookie cutters that Jennifer sent me. I took them out to my garage and I spray painted each one of them a different metallic spray paint color, a brown, a copper color, and a gold. And then I'm gonna use these as napkin rings. That's it, you stick the napkin through and you're donezo. You could easily add a tag to this if you wanna add names to it, but I'm just keeping this simple y'all and it worked out really well. Speaking of easy DIYs, here's one more. Um, those two pumpkins that Jennifer sent me, I really did not want to do anything to them because I haven't seen them at my Dollar Tree. So I decided to make a little um, just kind of arrangement. I had this mini dough bowl and decided to put the pumpkins inside of there. The pumpkin pick that she sent me, I cut off those velvet pumpkins and the little curly cue also threw those in there. And I had some wooden acorns, some wooden mushrooms and decided that I was gonna spray paint a couple of my acorns gold. And the pack of leaves that she sent me, I also spray painted those with kind of a copper color and just set those in there. And that is all I did. I kept this arrangement super simple, but the next DIY is a compliment piece to this, but I really do love how this turned out. Here's a little piece that I can also display with that arrangement that I just made. I'll be using one of the wooden home signs that she sent me as well as this little beaded ornament garlandy wreath thingamabobber. I started by breaking off the stuff that was on this. I'm going to save the leaf. I do need that. And the beads, I removed those from the wire. And the home sign, I took it and a piece of scrapbook paper that I had from Hobby Lobby. I flipped the home sign onto the back of it and also flipped the home sign backwards, traced the outline and kind of traced, well, actually I traced the whole thing, not just the outline. And then I cut that out and attached it to the home sign using a glue stick. From there, I was ready to take the beads and string them up on some twine. And when I got to the end of the twine, I just made a tassel right there with that twine by wrapping it around my hand and kind of tying it off just to kind of make it simpler and had the tassel dangling at the end. I hot glued the bead strand to the home sign 
And then the leaf, I kind of trimmed off where there was a little hole and hot glued that just right above the tassel. And then this little piece, can, I can kind of display it with that arrangement that I made or even if I want to display it by itself. Time to tackle one of the challenge items. I'm not gonna do the twist with this one, so that means the next challenge item will also have the twist. So to start with, I removed the ball and the little rope portion to this blue uh, ring, and that little blue kind of plastic piece on the side there, I didn't want that on there, so I did my best without cutting my fingers to cut that off. I grabbed a clear candlestick that I had in my stash from Dollar Tree and one of these pumpkins that also came from Dollar Tree and I needed to get this glued to my candlestick but I'm flipping it upside down. So I'm using some permanent strong adhesive glue. Highly recommend that you use that if you decide to recreate this DIY. And I turned my pumpkin upside down, stuck it on the candlestick and then set that aside to set up. While the candlestick is setting up, I grabbed a piece of white foam board from Dollar Tree and traced the inside of this blue ring, used my hobby knife to get that cut out. Once it was cut out, I took some more of that strong grip glue and I put it on the inside of the blue ring and then I took that foam circle that I cut out and stuck it inside of the blue ring. After the piece of foam is set up in that blue ring, I grabbed my glue gun and attached that to the top of the candlestick. From there, I took it outside to my spray tent and I spray painted it with some white spray paint. Once that uh, pedestal was all dry, I grabbed my destroyer brush. That's right, I call this my destroyer brush because the bristles are all crazy. I destroyed the paintbrush, but that's the kind of the look I wanna go for is a destroyed look, if that makes any sense. Probably not, but I just want the bristles to kind of fly all over while I'm applying this is pretty much what that means. So I grabbed some more of that antique rub and buff and I uh, put it all over this thing until I got it looking how I wanted to. I didn't want it like, obviously full coverage, but I do like the pops of color. I was gonna just leave it white, but I actually end up really, really liking adding these little gold accents to it. And then this is ready to have some type of fall decor displayed on it. And here we are down to that last challenge item, a fairy garden. Now that means I've got to work the twist in, which is to use some of the shipping box that Jennifer mailed all my stuff in. I'm actually gonna use it three times with this. Now it's a fairy garden, y'all. Now I will say sometimes I'm actually kind of proud of myself. I do feel like I work some craft magic, but y'all have seen me destroy Barbie heads. You've seen me destroy troll pins. I just could not break this and do anything but maybe give it kind of a fun, I don't know, uplift. So what I'm doing with this fairy garden is I'm going for a whimsical fall, Halloween-y, kind of feel-good little fairy garden. So to start with, I decided to paint the pumpkin or the little pumpkin fairy house black and um, also the mailbox, the top of the mailbox is also going to get black paint as well. Pink is going to be our fun color here. So the door is going to get painted pink as well as all of the pumpkins. I'm gonna use a couple different shades of pink to paint all of the pumpkins. I did grab some brown paint and use kind of a little bit of a, I don't know, a mixture of brown paint to go over the fence, the steps to the door and that little log pile next to the front door. And then I did a lighter shade of green for uh, the top of one of the pumpkins as well as the wreath on the pink door. For the windows and shutters, I'm using a white paint marker to go over those and define those better. And around the front door, those little kind of bricks, I did go in with just some regular old white paint. 
two of the windows had these little blobs of, I think they were supposed to be leaves. So I did paint those pink. And then the leaf on the very top of the house, I had painted it black, but then I decided to go back in and paint that pink as well. The last thing I did to the little house was just all the greenery on the bottom. I just kind of brightened that up, went in and brushed in a couple different shades of green and just brought a little color to that. Then I was ready to work on the little fairy. For the fairy makeover, I painted that pumpkin pink. I repainted the dress a little bit, a calmer green shade. I made the hair red just because, well, why not? I um, also painted the wings with some of that antique gold rub and buff. And her face, I did go in and try to give her blue eyes and realize, I don't know, the face was just kind of creepy. So I went in with a very... Uh, fine point paint pen and gave her at least some eyebrows because I don't know she was kind of creeping me out just a little bit for this little piece the grass got another little um, makeover with some more green paint the pumpkins got painted pink I did use a couple shades of brown just to kind of add some highlights to that fence and the leaf got painted gold the happy fall piece, the flowers got painted pink. Again, the pumpkins pink, the grass got green. And like I said, the mailbox got painted black. I did add a gold leaf to that as well as kind of uh, paint some pink pumpkins down at the bottom and added a little bit of green to that piece. Time to start tackling that twist. So for the first, like I said, I'm gonna use this box three times. The first one, I need a base for my fairy garden. I have this little moss sheet. So I just measured the moss sheet, cut out a piece of cardboard, and I hot glued the moss sheet down to get it some stability so that I could attach my fairy garden. Using the shipping box again, I cut a little pathway and drew just some hand, you know, some bricks and just kind of, you know, shaded it in a little bit so that I would have a walkway up to my fairy garden house. I glued down all of my pieces to my fairy garden on the base. I also took a black paint pen and added some jack-o-lantern jack -lantern faces to some of the pumpkins. With that last piece of the shipping box, I made a tree. I curled it up, kind of made this like little thing at the top and then just hot glued some of this green moss to make it look like a tree. And that brown moss, I did scatter that around kind of just to, I don't know, give the thing some texture. But I also used that at the base of the tree to help Hold the tree up. The other thing that I thought I was going to do, which maybe by the time this video goes live, I get it added, was to take some actual fairy lights and kind of string them around to make it look like they're hanging over the house. Um, see if I can get that up. But if not, that's it. This is my makeover to the little fairy garden. And that wraps up another round of mystery box DIYs. Let me know down below which one of these was your favorite. Also, let me know what would you have done with those two challenge items, the ankle skipper and the fairy garden. If it has been hot in your area above 100 degrees consistently, drop a sunshine emoji. I'd like to see who else is still trying to deal with this heat. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Here are some more videos you guys might enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.